Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the lecture. We would like to give you some insights a little bit how to combine ATVs based on the best forklift trucks in the world with a new technology and make you benefit from the best functionality that we can offer from Kion. And therefore, uh, I welcome my colleague, Vincent Heimer. He's president and CEO of Kio North America. And myself, Tobias Ziur, I'm senior vice president, mobile automation at Kion Group. And it's a pleasure being here with you. So what this presentation will be about is to make you understand what is a hybrid HEV meant to be, what are the differences, what is not meant to be hybrid HEVs, what hybrid HEVs are looking into our society, what are the reasons why we expect that HEVs and hybrid HEVs especially will penetrate markets further and what are the benefits uh, Kion as the brand and supplier of those vehicles can bring to the markets. So one of the things that we'd like to uh, go over with you uh, this afternoon is uh, why uh, hybrid solutions, so that is basically an industrial truck that, has had, that receives industrial um, uh, automation, how that has a higher value than traditional uh, AGV solutions that have been around since the 70s. Um, also, we like to, to, to show you and teach you how those uh, hybrid uh, AGV solutions uh, can, uh, can work better than your traditional manual uh, forklift trucks that are in your operation uh, today. So what is a hybrid HEV? A hybrid HEV is a standard forklift truck which is equipped with add-ons. And those add-ons are the laser guidance and navigation equipment on the one hand side, but on the other hand side also dedicated safety systems which protects people working in the environment with a vehicle like a, a automated forklift, but on the other hand side also protects the environment from any unforeseen situations. And that in combination creates a machine that can operate as a fully automated HEV or, and that's very important, can be driven manually. And now the question could rise, if I go for an automated vehicle, why I should drive this manually? And it's a very reasonable and good question. But whenever an operator, a company, starts to think about automation, you always say, what will happen if a system is not working? How can I handle this? And therefore, and this is mainly in the transition phase, on the one hand side, an HEV, which can be driven manually and automatic, is always giving you flexibility in your processes. On the other hand side, when investing and going for automation, it's very unlikely that you put a driver on a machine like this. But for, for the psychology of, of people, this helps a lot. And also, when you think about the workforce, which is in your operations, it's very important when having hybrid HEVs, the vehicle looks like very similar like the vehicles you used before. And therefore, it's important also to accept these vehicles in your operation, that a hybrid vehicle can bring you a lot of benefits. So what is not a hybrid? It's not a steered vehicle. So this one is remotely steered. So that could be a hybrid. But uh, HEV is not remotely steered. It's steered by a system and integrating information from the surrounding. Here the information is coming from the guy who is steering the vehicle. And of course, there could be incidents that in an HEV application cannot happen. That means that HEV will always stop before there is a conflict. But nevertheless, it's true with a manual vehicle you can drive into a HEV. So that's not a hybrid. hybrid. But the next example is also not a hybrid. This is self-driving, but there's no steering. So there's no system steering. And when it's about hybrid vehicles, it's important to know that there's always the control level steering 
our vehicles and bringing flexibility and safety to the operation. So, that we can see here now, here, this is a real hybrid HEV, where you see that the automation pack enables the vehicle to automatically drive, navigate, and handle goods. So by this, you can handle dedicated applications, picking, putting, transporting, lifting, and stacking. And by this, logically, cover all your applications in your operations. Anything a forklift can do can also be done by a hybrid HEV. Important add-on, anything a forklift can do that is allowed <coughs> can be done by a hybrid HEV. Sorry, yeah, couldn't you? Yes, the uh, question was, is trailer loading and unloading and also a part of this? Yes, yes. The question was, can, the, can this product load and unload? And, the, and the, the answer is yes. These are regular forklifts, basically, that are automated. Uh, so anything a forklift can do today is what a hybrid AGV can do without an operator. Maybe one small um, exception. This is based for the US market. When we go to other uh, world markets, trailer loading, unloading can be a little bit more difficult because in other regions, for example, Europe, we do not have uniform trailers. And that might uh, cause some exceptions on this case. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So what kind of uh, forklifts can become hybrids? And the answer is basically any, uh, any electric powered forklift, if it's a counterbalance product or a smaller warehouse product, uh, they can all be converted into a hybrid. So you think about a regular forklift, also reach, reach trucks, very narrow aisle trucks, tuggers to get things through a production line. Think about freezer applications. And just in general, you know, like we'll talk about that a little bit more, uh, about the, the, the labor shortage that we all feel, uh, not just uh, when we uh, you know, go somewhere and experience something, uh, but also in our, in our warehouses. So basically any kind of forklift that you know today can be automated in some form or fashion. And a big benefit when automating standard vehicles is that in the future there will be also automation interfaces. That means if you look to the past, there you always have point-to-point -point wiring. You look for signals in the vehicle and then bring these signals to your controllers in the future. And that means to the vehicle that we exhibit here right now, the K truck, this truck is having this automation interface. That means you have a dedicated plug to the controller where an automation kit is plugged directly, and by this, all this point-to-point -point wiring will be a standard CAN-BUS-based information flow. This, on the one hand side, enables the teams on site to be faster in production, but also very important for the customers. When having issues by being CAN-based, you can read the, the error protocols and get much more qualified information about system problems and not starting uh, digging into the cables and find the problem base point and solve issues. So you're much faster in troubleshooting, but also much faster in producing these kind of vehicles. And what is a huge advantage is that these are all industrially produced products. There's no experimental technology in there. All these products, we build thousands of them and sell them all over the world. Um, one thing that's also very interesting for those of you that are thinking about automation and like, you know, how does it fit in the process? First of all, we have a world of knowledge that we are more than willing to share. Uh, second, a lot of these products, the first one here is a V&A uh, product. Uh, we also sell with a so-called pre-automation package. What that means, uh, like Tob uh, Tobias was explaining with the different sensors and things that are necessary in an AGV, that we can uh, prep that forklift with a package that it's ready to be automated. It's a nominal charge, it's not that expensive, and the automation package that Tobias was talking about and the sensors can be added later. So even today, if you're looking to make a, a, a purchase or a recommendation uh, with those types of technologies, you can make sure that your warehouse is ready for the future. We kind of spoke about some of the benefits, and of course, it's you know the, the economical benefit uh, can be one, uh, in a, especially in a three-shift operation. 
But one thing we really don't talk too much about is safety. Um, it is, you know, the, there's 61,800 non-serious accidents forklift related in this country every year. Just think about that. 61,800 times it almost goes wrong. Of those, 34,900 result in a serious accident. That is a good, that's a good sized town that gets hurt every year because of forklifts. We as an industry want to do something about it and we believe that also hybrid, hybrid AGVs and AGV technology in general will increase that safety a lot. Because 85 fatalities per year in a warehouse as a forklift related uh, accident is way too high. And uh, we need to see how we can reduce that. And we believe that uh, the, 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 the hybrid AGV technology that uh, Tobias will explain will help there. And I mean this brings us to safety and safety aspects on the one hand side is always based on preventive safety when you train your people in your operation how to work, how to care, how to co um, cooperate with an HEV but also equipment that is coming from an HEV side and of course as you can see an HEV is having eyes so it's looking to the sides this is done by the laser curtains for example and other sensoric uh, camera systems in the future more and more uh, will protect the vehicle from intrusions getting too close to the vehicles and as we can see on the right side there you see a person standing in a yellow field the yellow field means the vehicle considers a person is moving into my path I, re I realize the issue and I slow down my vehicle that means I give time to the person to move away and it will not penalize my overall application if the person did not move away and like this guy is getting in the orange phase, then the truck um, will stop. But when the guy removes his fa uh, feet again, then the truck will restart again and start uh, moving forward. And when the obstacle is getting in the red zone, that's the stop, the danger zone, there the vehicle will shut down and uh, protect the surrounding but also the vehicle from any collisions. And here in the future we will see a tremendous evolution in safety systems. As in the past we talked about laser scanners, there will be more and more camera systems coming in the future which will on the one hand side allow us with the processing of camera knowledge and AI to take much more information, much more signals and information from the surrounding, interpret these signals and information and take decisions out of this interpretation. And very important here is that this will be a process in the future. There will be moves but also cost will drop down by using different technologies in the future and this will be a very important factor for you as this will mean shorter return on invest for our customers. One other thing as well and I briefly mentioned it already um, I was in, a, uh, in an industry um, uh, conference a couple of weeks ago in Washington, D.C., and, and it's amazing to learn that right now in, in the country we have a million more jobs than people looking for work. There are unemployed people, but not everybody's looking for work. So, and that's what we feel in everything we do right now, and, and, and trying to hire the people in any category right now is extremely hard. So that's why we also feel that besides economic benefits, safety benefits, a more stable process, also the workforce challenges, and not just today, but also going forward, uh, that uh, uh, hybrid AGVs can be an excellent solution. For example, if you have a hybrid AGV setup, uh, you could even decide to do one shift manual and one or two shifts maybe automated. Uh, so night shift can be automated, day shift can be manual. These are all the different uh, possibilities with this technology, how you can organize your, uh, your warehouse. <clears throat> Certain peaks that need to be done that used to be, uh, the, you had, used to rent a lot of equipment, for example, maybe this equipment can run at night to replenish things. So for your operation and the processes that uh, the, the hybrid automation can help you with are tremendous. Um, and, and very important, I mean, also for you, you want to get service and whenever using uh, hybrid HEVs, you don't have to rely to a dedicated service organization 
because in this case, standard service technicians can step in and do service work, and therefore a dense service network like Kion is offering is a huge asset in the market, giving you the flexibility, but also the reliability in uh, downtimes to make a system working permanently. And looking also to the aging, as Vincent mentioned, that's not a fact that will disappear tomorrow. That's something we have to face in the future. And uh, when taking over responsibility at mobile automation, many of my friends told me, are you the one who will kill all these employments in Germany and Europe and the world? And I said, no, because look to the markets. And it's not a US problem. It's not a German problem, an Eastern German problem. It's in the world. There are no forklift drivers anymore. Or some other problems. Each morning, our um, fleet managers and our customers do not know how many drivers from the last day will show up the next day and uh, provide you with a reliable labor force doing your logistic processes. So this is not a US issue, this is not it's a Chinese issue, that's a world issue. And therefore, I think we do not have any other choice as in investing in mobile automation. And if we look in the last 30 years, uh, in the next seven years, 25% of the work labor will be older than 60 and uh, young people are just counting for 8% in our society. So this will enlarge the problem of labor in the future even more and therefore we have to find ways to use the labor which is available in our markets for the best way and not for a stupid A to B transportation where we do not get people being willing to drive a forklift even if it's a nice comfortable forklift. So like, uh, like uh, to be as mentioned, a lot of things stay the same with the hybrid AGV. Uh, it's, it has a, a very smart system on there that it will guide it through your warehouse. Uh, think about safety and all these kind of things. But it's still a regular forklift. You can get a regular maintenance contract on it. A local indie dealer can take care of it. Uh, and these are industrial products that uh, you know, we, we, we build them by the thousands. So cost of this, these systems are lower. Cost of maintaining these systems are lower. Uh, payback is, is quicker, and, and it has tremendous impacts on safety uh, and availability of workforce. So what is part of the automation kit of an HEV? Uh, as said before, of course, you have the light laser guidance and navigation components. These are the components of the t on the top of the vehicle. Then. We have advanced laser safety systems. These you find around the vehicle, protecting the vehicle around uh, and capturing all the information about obstacles and objects moving into the path of a vehicle. Then graphical touch sensors as the monitor as in the front part. This is the human interface where the responsible person can change routings or give orders to a vehicle if not done by a warehouse management system. So when you have more complex systems, this is something where you get automated from your, from your SAP or warehouse management system uh, orders and tasks assigned. But this is also the uh, display where in a case of an issue, you can look and get information about what is causing the problem at the vehicle it could even give you the number that you have to call in a case of an issue and in the future also transferring this information directly to your cell phone so the logistic manager can see directly, ah, vehicle number five, there's an issue, service technician is already informed, in two hours the guy will be on site, everything is fine. So there also the way in working with mobile automation vehicles will change and digitalization will bring us new ways of collaborating with these systems and keeping downtimes short. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what are the advantages of a hybrid over an HEV? Of course, as I mentioned, the dual use. That means we can use the vehicle manually, but we can use manually just when it's needed. So it's in the moment when we have an issue on the vehicle, maybe on the navigation uh, components, so you can take the vehicle and drive it manually. 
out of the, the, the aisle, for example. But also, very often, uh, this is something whenever you need to do a task which is not part of the automation uh, process, then uh, the manual driver could use a vehicle which is not used for the automated part at this moment as well in a manually mode. But as I said, this is something what normally happens just in case of issues or in the beginning when first systems are applied. An automated system is always supposed to run permanently without a driver because this is when this system is used at its best when there will be no damages in the surrounding, so no collision with any wrecks, there were, and also when the highest pro productivity is given because the system knows how fast to drive, where you are allowed to drive, where you're not allowed to drive, how high you can lift the pallet with x kilos and not overload something and tilt a vehicle. So this system brings a lot of safety to your application. And of course, we have the same mechanical maintenances as mentioned before, so the service technician from a standard vehicle can also service an HEV. And we have a lower cost per unit because the hybrid HEVs are produced in an industrial way. So it's not produced in a workshop, it's produced on the main line where the standard vehicle is also be pro produced. And by this, you have total different scaling effects than if you build these things on small numbers in a dedicated small workshop. So what are your takeaways of today? Hybrid HEVs are flexible automation solutions that offers better value than traditional HEVs on the one hand side. And on the other hand side, hybrid HEVs are safer solution than traditional vehicles. And, um, address continuous labor issues for the future. That means, on the one hand side, we have the safest system addressing to the overall surrounding in your manufacturing process, and on the other side, solving your labor issues, finding adequate people. And I think that's very important when looking to the future. We have to face those topics. We should not watch away, and th those kind of trends will change the way of offering HEVs in the future, of selling, but also of applying HEVs in your applications. So, main thing is, what should be avoided? Worst case scenarios like this, where on the one hand side, of course, people can get hurt, biggest issue, but also if you see the damage coming just from knocking a pole off a rack, can destroy a complete warehouse, also here, and you're laughing and say, yeah, but that will never happen in my uh, warehouse. Those situations, nobody got hurt in this uh, example here. That's very good. But these simple things can happen in each forklift application. And that is something which is very important, where HEVs and automated forklifts can help a lot. Uh, that's just stupidity, what we can see here. But sometimes when drivers are bored, or have night shift, exactly these things happen. If you ask the guys afterwards, why did you do this? Can you explain it to me? They can't give you an answer, but they do it. Yeah. So um, we have an opportunity to change those things. And I think very important is experience. And if I look what um, Dematic Kion Linde did in the past, we had more than 8,000 vehicles installed in the markets. We transported more than 3.2 billion pallets and drove more than 300 million kilometers. This is experience that we use to make vehicles more safe and add value in your applications. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do they have any questions? Uh, the pro question is if, uh, if we have done any studies between normally uh, manually operated forklifts and hybrid AGVs. Um, yes, of course. A human being is always faster and by this more productive. But, now comes the but, the price we pay for this is on the, y on the one hand side, the cost of injury on the, on the driver. That means not that you need necessarily these worst case scenarios that they're accidents. 
but by working hard and fast, you get back pains, you get uh, some stresses on the body of the driver on the one hand side, but you have these small damages, which would not necessarily destroy a whole warehouse. But uh, if you talk to warehouse managers, they easily have 30, 50, 100,000 dollars cost a year for repairing warehouse equipment, uh, trucks when you crash into each other, and damages in the warehouse. And this is something you also have to consider. And uh, it's, it's like with everything. When you have a continuous flow, you're more productive than if you have a speed brake, speed brake uh, application. So, so let's assume that the budget is allocated to purchase this. Then the question is, how many units do I need That's why you have consulting teams out there which calculates this exactly for you. And today is like this, that you cannot replace one operator by one forklift. That means one manually driven forklift in average must be replaced by one point something automated forklifts. But of course this will change by having more powerful computing, more better sensors, better cameras. Uh, this will go down one day to one to one. But that's not the, the case today. And that's why in a one shift application automation very often if you look on the real cost is not economic yet so is it lower than 2 to 1 or is it like 1.5 it's, it's 1.5 roughly yeah. you retrofit the existing piece of equipment um, at Kio no technically yes but why we do not do this today is because it's about software is it the right status how is the truck being used before? So if you drive 10,000 hours already with a truck and then you mount a, a $100,000 uh, system on the vehicle and you have an issue and I have to start arguing with you, is it based on your vehicle that you put into the, the workshop or is it based on our components? That's why from today's point of view, it's always based on new vehicles. Maybe in the future this will change. Yes. But today we are not doing this. Yeah. But that's why, for example, an option as free automation on industrial trucks can be so interesting because you can add the, the, the pre-wiring already for the uh, potential future automation so that the, the hardware is ready to do it anytime the customer wants it yeah. and also when it comes to like, you know, the different shifts, uh, some of the new uh, camera and sensor technology that will make the whole system go faster. Uh, you know, that, that, that there's a lot of that coming in the next few years. And very important is to have a future compatibility. That means when having a system, it's important that systems for future changes are compatible. That means if there's a new camera coming, that you can integrate this in existing systems and not that you say, oh, sorry, my, my software version is not supporting these new items. Uh, therefore, we really work a lot in making this uh, possible and give you this future proofness of systems. Yeah. What's the minimal requirements from a system or a system standpoint? Is it WMS? Is it WCS? That's depending. The question is, what are the minimum system requirement, uh, in order, requirements in order to, uh, to automate? That's depending on your system. If it's one vehicle running alone, you don't need a WMS. If there's several vehicles, you don't need this necessarily neither. If it's in a system where you have crossing and you have load management and you want to connect the vehicles to your warehouse management system, then you need this, yes. There was a question, if there are some side effects that could affect the navigation, like a power outage, of course, if there's no power, the system is not running. Yeah? That's true. Um, but normally, a system is supposed to run when the environmental um, um, setting is right. Um, no. But of course, it's electric, it's technic. There could be incidents. And that's why it's important to have a service base which enables you to react fast and don't let customers having an application which is down. And what you mentioned with power outage, that's exactly where hybrid uh, products come into place. Because you know, if, if there's a power outage, the forklift is battery powered. It has lights on it. You can still get it out of the way. You can still get things sorted out. Uh, that, that is a big plus of, uh, of a system like this. As long as you have the drivers. If you have 
set uh, off all the drivers, then of course it will be difficult to drive the vehicles manually as well in the future. Any other questions? The question is, if you have an uh, HEV like this and you want to use it uh, manually, is there any issue? From an operative point of view, no. You just jump on the vehicle, you grab it and you drive it. But then the question was, is there not any damage happening on sensors? Also there, the answer is normally no, because sensors are captured rigidly. So if you smash some things against them, they will not break. But there's one point where I must say, yes, there is an issue, especially when you have mixed fleets, especially in the beginning, there might be drivers which looking for the weak spot of a HEV, but that's not uh, related to um, hybrid vehicles. That's also when you use a standard HEV in your application. And therefore, you have to educate people that this is not the big enemy. It's a part of your operational forces and it's a part of the team. And therefore, a lot of people, when introducing HEVs, they give names to the HEVs. And when there's Paul driving, it's not such a bad iron enemy than if there's a human name as assigned to a vehicle like this. So sometimes very simple activities could help you to integrate these vehicles into your labor force uh, very easily. Um, the question was, can we use HEVs uh, also in the freezer application? And the answer is yes, we can do so, yeah. Yeah. It's actually an ideal application for it, you know, for all the environmental reasons and labor issues. Uh, so, yeah, but we can make that work in the freezer application. Of course, you need some additional attachments, for example. You, need, you can't, don't can have fog on the, on the laser scanners, etc. So you have to preheat them, etc. But all this technically is feasible. Any more questions? We're ahead of schedule. Thank you very much. Have a thank fantastic you. fair and thanks for listening. Have a good day.